everyone, it's Elisa. I have another step two question for you. Go ahead and pause this and do it on your own and I'm going to get started. So I'm gonna highlight as I read. One day after going, uh, undergoing an open ventral hernia repair, a 46 year old male complains of shortness of breath. Right? He has smoked one pack of cigarettes daily for 15 years. He does not drink alcohol. On physical exam, temperature is 100.3. Pulse is 99, respirations are 21, and blood pressure is 126 over 72. He appears uncomfortable. A lung exam shows reduced breath sounds over the left lung base. Cardiac exam is benign. The surgical dressing over the laparotomy site is clean, dry, and intact. Bowel sounds are hypoactive. The calves appear symmetrical and Hamann sign is negative. His hemoglobin is 12.1, leukocytes are 11.4, and platelets are 210. X-ray of the chest and supine position is shown below. Labs are still pending. Which of the following is most likely cause of this patient's symptoms? So I highlighted what I think is the most important when you first read this um, paragraph. It's also important that I think um, that he is a smoker and he had an open ventral hernia repair. So he had a relatively invasive surgical procedure. Um, so let's look at the x-ray. I'm going to enlarge it just so we can see for a second what's going on. So what do we see? We see um, a quite enlarged heart possibly. Uh, we see some opacification of the lung fields over here and um, possibly over here when you first look at it, you see that he is intubated. Um, so, you know, first thing that you want to think about is uh, how do I analyze an x-ray? Well, um, obviously this isn't the best x-ray. He's not inspiring as much as he could inspire. That's okay. Um, you look at um, the borders of the diaphragm. So let's say if you can see this angle and this angle, there probably isn't fluid, but you notice that you can't see this angle. So there could either be fluid, um, you know, collapse, pneumonia, anything. So really the problem is on this side of the diaphragm. You also see some increased vascular markings, but that doesn't really tell you much. Um, and again, you know, the heart may look enlarged, but you have to look and you see that the cardiac exam is benign. Um, all right, so with that in mind, let's go over the answer choices. So, um, I'm gonna skip over this. So, uh, answer number, one is pneumonia. So pneumonia can cause post-op dyspnea, and obviously um, you'd have an opacity restricted to one pulmonary lobe. You wouldn't really see it in a lung. Uh, so for example, like this, you would see very clear borders. Um, you would also see you know, signs of pneumonia. They'd have fever, they'd have chills, they'd have a cough with purulent sputum, um, they'd have bronchial breath sounds. Um, these, this is a reminder of what the lung borders are on chest x-ray, so you can look over this. And then pneumonia is uh, quite classically confined to fissures, so it won't cross fissures. The second option is pleural effusion. So classically, in a pleural effusion, you would have a loss of that costodiaphragmatic angle that I mentioned, so like right here but not like right here. And you would also see um, a mediastinal shift to the opposite side, classically. However, this picture uh, demonstrates that atelectasis, you would have um, very similar findings in that you see white out of the lung field. However, the uh, mediastinal contents uh, and the trachea is pulled to the same side um, of the chest cavity. So with that in mind, let's look over here. I'm going to enlarge this one more time. And we're just going to look. Is the, you know, the trachea 
and the mediastinum shifted at all? Well, you could argue that the heart looks like it's more on the patient's left. However, the trachea is pretty midline. Um, so this tells us it's most likely not pleural effusion, but uh, it does not rule out something like atelectasis. The next option is congestive heart failure. So like we said, the heart may look enlarged, um, but in congestive heart failure, you'd have other manifestations. So you'd have, crack, you'd have crackles, you'd have wheezing, you'd have a cough, the patient might be cyanotic, might be cold and clammy, um, Plus, the cardiac exam is completely benign in this patient. And most importantly, chest x-ray would show congestion in both lung fields. It would be symmetrical. You would lose that costodiaphragmatic angle on both sides, um, not just on one side like in this x-ray. Next option is a PE. So the reason I threw in Hahnemann's sign in there, in case you don't remember what that is, it's calf pain on dorsiflexion of the foot. So it it's not exactly sensitive or specific for a DVT, but in general, it's good to know what that sign is. Um, however, I also threw in that uh, his calves are completely symmetrical if they had any difference. So, you know, a circumference of greater than two centimeters um, or any redness, pain, or swelling, you might want to test for a DVT. Um, and then a PE will likely not have any... Um, chest x-ray findings, unless it's a saddle embolism, in which case the patient might present a little bit differently. Um, and then finally, we have pneumothorax, which is um, definitely you'd hear decreased breath sounds over one of the lung fields exactly in this patient, but you would see quite a mediastinal shift with pneumothorax. And on chest x-ray, you would see something like this. You would see the border of a collapsed lung and then quite a lot of just black space. And the reason it's black is because uh, the lungs aren't completely black, they have vessels. So that makes it a little bit whiter. So if I go back to this picture, you see that you, know, you have some vascularity over here. It's not just a completely black lung. But if this was collapsed, you would see a border, completely black space, and then some uh, grayer space. So that leaves us with the answer, which is atelectasis. So um, just a note that the reason that the bowel is hypoactive is likely due to it being manipulated during surgery. Uh, he had open hernia surgery. Likely they touched the bowel quite a bit to get it uh, back inside the abdominal cavity. Um, and then atelectasis is one of those common complications uh, develops within 72 hours of surgery and is preventative. Uh, it's preventable with incentive spirometry, which is why all the patients in the hospital have uh, those little tu breathing tubes, and they have to breathe in 10 times per hour. Um, with atelectasis, you might have a fever. You might have dyspnea, cyanosis, tachycardia. This patient is um, almost tachycardic. He's at 99 per minute, and he's almost febrile. You know, febrile is 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, and he's at 100.3. So, uh, you know, what could we have done? We could have had the patient do incentive spirometry. So I hope that was a helpful question. I'm just gonna scroll down so you guys have the answers. And if you wanna pause and reread anything, you know, you're welcome to. All right, thank you so much. See you next week.